you are the judge, that you are the final thoughts on everything. You spoke life into this universe, and you have the right to judge what is righteous and what is not. Bring blessing to us this day, O Lord, so we can walk close to you, so we can be transformed by your power, mercy, and grace. In Christ's name, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Good morning, all. Welcome with us. We are together again, Hi. just in the Lord. Something good is going to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. So, um, so I, I found it this morning, but I can't remember where I, where I found it. And then Time Magazine ran it. There's a story of an unjust judge. And a guy comes into his court, stealing $10 worth of beer from his neighbor, and he gets sentenced to 25 years in prison for stealing $10 worth of beer. And then later in the day, a guy comes in from embezzling $1,000 from something or other, and they give him five years probation. The same court, the same judge, the same day. <laughs> One guy gets 25 years, and one guy gets to go home and just watch his steps for five years. Same name as the judge. <laughs> and so you think, if there's unjust judges, they they often now make headlines on one of the one of the networks if they they think that way, or one of the networks if they think that way. But uh, if justice is pivotal to society, and it is, and we have judges ruling unjustly, and we see that with both Democratic and Republican and independent judges, it messes up the judicial system. We, You go before the judge and you expect a reasonably consistent pattern of, uh, and I'm a, I'm a baseball fan, and and nowadays, they have a little box that tells you if the pitch was high or low or left or right or whatever. And when the when the umpire calls this pitch a ball in one inning, and then later in the inning, he calls the same exact pitch a strike, you got to think, you're making me crazy. You got to be consistent in your judgments. Yep. Or, or it messes with you. Actually, in the uh, um, Major League Baseball now, every – Every umpire gets a gets a scorecard from the National Umpire Association or Major League Baseball, whatever it is, that tells them how good they did, or in some cases, how terrible they did. So every day they get to modify their judgments based on based on this computer thing that's on the bottom of the screen. Yeah. So if justice is not universal then the system is a mess. So yeah. one of the commentators you talked to the... Have, uh, you got to have a for right to, to have righteousness. There's got to be, um, I mean, uh, the whole, our whole system, what we're going to be learning the hard way here is that uh, there's got to be trust in, in all parties concerned. And we've, we've, we've pretty much dissolved that. And yeah. it, it, it's uh, it's going to be it's going to I mean it's, this is just going to get more and more lopsided as this goes on, and uh, nothing new. I mean, you think back to the Salem witch trials or the Great Inquisition. Yeah. Um, you know, these are just examples that stand out in history. We're shocked when we read read about them, but you know what? It's just a, a tendency of human nature. Once once um once veracity is gone once uh trust trustworthiness is gone yep it's just who knows where it'll go from there it just we'll see it's we not gonna to, <laughs> we need to be careful what we wish for because <laughs> like yes <laughs> like pastor mentioned that the game of baseball now has computers involved and is that what we're headed towards with society in courtrooms too? Mm -hmm. Or on larger levels? It's the only way to have a fair justice, you would assume. I mean, but then, 
then you give over to the AIs too. So the balance, right. you know, the balance is always out of balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the commentators was talking this morning that the that the it looks like David's out in his cave and um that a ruling has come down from Saul's judges condemning David and demanding the death sentence. And so if that if that picture is true, that message gets conveyed to David in Adullam or wherever he is. And and if it, it it's wrong. You can't do that just because Saul has appointed you, and we see that. Okay. That takes us down to verse one. Verse one. So yeah, we're in uh, Psalms 58, verse one, and New Living Translation, NLT. Justice. Do you rulers know the meaning of the word? <laughs> <laughs> right there. Do you judge the people fairly? That's the question. Mm. No, verse two. No. You plot injustice in your hearts. You spread violence throughout the land. These wicked people are born sinners. Even from birth, they have lied and gone their own way. Talking about the, the judges here. There you go. Um, but judges but in other real sense, sense, sorry? In a real sense, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Until you come to Christ, right. your perspective is worldly. And so, you know, you just have... You plot injustice in your heart, and that takes us takes us also to Calvary. Uh, how are we going to get Jesus killed? Well, we'll say this, and we'll say that, and then uh, injustice in your heart mm -hmm. is a vicious cycle. Um, sure. And the the scriptures tell us the Lord will judge; He is the one of vengeance. Mm -hmm. Well, why is that? Because me and my natural would take vengeance on things that I might get wrong. Or yeah. even if I get it right, my my judgment would be harsher than God's. God has a, a plan for redemption, and I have a plan for smashing this one person in the mouth. And uh, we'll find that in a minute, though. Hmm. Yeah, it's Do interesting we... that uh, some versions uh, in the first verse, uh, and this first, this version says justice. Do you rulers know the meaning of the word? Other versions use the word gods, small g, in that same place. That these people think themselves so elevated, and how do they get there? Injustice in their hearts, spread unchecked, yeah. goes to your head. Next thing you know, you're looking down at everybody, or so you think. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, yep. he spread violence throughout the land. Verse 3, these wicked people are born sinners. Even from birth, they have lied and gone their own way. They spit venom like deadly snakes. They are like cobras that refuse to listen, ignoring the tunes of the snake charmers, no matter how skillfully they play. That's a really bad day if you're a snake charmer and your snake isn't paying any attention at all. <laughs> this this could end very badly. Very, very uh, good. So there's if justice is not godly justice, then it becomes venom. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes and, and and we've seen it in courts for the past months. Both both sides have had judicial things that are unjust and just plain wrong and merrily going along the way because they've been uh, they've been uh, appointed by one political party or the other and they've uh, and it's horrific it's yeah. horrific and if you if you only think it's horrific on one side you don't understand the situation it's horrific yeah. if mm -hmm. you are not judging on a level playing field absolute this is this, this is this, then, then the whole judicial system gets gets a bad name, and rightfully so. The publicity of it nowadays yeah. is, you know, you have, you know, everybody sees the news, and uh, one case or another, some famous cases out of stupidity that anybody can see the truth, um, eats up so much money and so much time and it's just such a waste you know mm -hmm. um 
God's the only fair judge. Amen. You know, I mean, and if you are going to be a fair judge, you have to have godly rules and laws that you're going by. That's right. They have yeah. to be in your heart. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The whole case for morality is stems from having a uh, an impartial judge, somebody who's too completely out of the picture. God is perfect for that. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Because he is not, because he's not human for one thing, and uh, uh, he stands apart, and uh, and and uh, because it's his creation that that's uh, in hanging in the balance as to how it, uh, you know, how just or unjust the whole creation goes. He's got a vested interest, but it's for the better for everyone concerned, and uh, so. Uh, People that uh, are doing their doing everything they can to negate God are negating yeah. that central pillar uh, of this is of the whole uh, whole whole of existence. Really, ultimately, it it, uh, it affects everything. So that's right. Yeah, you you see it now not on just a uh, you see it on a global level, um, not just a in the countries. You see it nationwide and right. just like the whole world it's yeah. true okay uh yeah so uh, pick up picking up in verse six we're in uh psalm 58 nlt verse six break off their fangs oh god talking about the un the the unjust um people uh referenced above Break oh. off their fangs, smash the jaws of these lions, oh Lord. A couple of uh, graphic uh, pictures here and more to come. Verse 7. Let's, let's yeah. talk about sex first. Yeah. So sometimes we try to typology the different metaphors, similes that God uses. Um. Notice that these lions, often in the Old Testament, the lions get a bad rap, and rightfully so. A lion, a lion in the eyes of a shepherd can only do evil. But then this descendant of this shepherd, David, becomes the lion of Judah. So let's not push the uh, lions are always evil in the scriptures. When they are, they tell us they are. When they're not, it, it, so just don't get caught up in, in running through this, lions are always evil. There will be no this, one good lion, <laughs> the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's right. There is a good lion. Um, and it's funny how uh, the devil meant it for evil, but God uses it for good. This visual of a Amen. of a protective lion of Judah wonderful picture so so these are not new testament psalms david mm -hmm. does not have the baptism of the holy spirit david does not have so for him to look up and see the justice system going amok because of their own uh loyalties to saul uh, break their fangs break their power smash their jaws oh lord now i don't do not pray these prayers in the New Testament. Break them down, Lord. Let them serve you. Uh, perfectly good New Testament prayer. Uh, I forgive them, Lord, also is a good New Testament prayer. Uh, yeah. May they disappear like water into a thirsty ground. May their weapons become useless in their hands. We do, when David's looking up at these unjust judges, his hope is that their legacy is as water that's just run off the ground mm -hmm. as if they as if their weapons are useless so and their and their self empowerment is uh just gone away like chaff in the winds and may they be like snails that dissolve into their own slime <laughs> <laughs> What an incredible visual that is for us. There actually are snails that are, if you heat them too much, they turn into slime. But that, that the legacy of evil justice just be washed away 
like a stillborn child who will never see the sun. Mm. May their legacy, O oh Lord, be as useless as these things that we see uh, yeah. pointed out here. Yeah. God will sweep them away. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say all pictures of uh, the abhorrent, um, yes. those that are on the un injustice, is, is that an abhorrent to David at this point? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, you were reading... Nine, go ahead. Verse nine. God uh, will sweep them away, both young and old, faster than a pot heats over burning thorns. This is, again, a reference. You see, I'm talking about burning thorns, using uh, clipped thorns as kindling, really. They burn fast and hot, and um, that's uh, what he's after here pictorially. <laughs> they burn fast and hot, and then they're done. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah. These right. guys are burning. These guys are burning me, but they're soon going to be done. Oh God! Yeah. No. Mm. Oh, mm. Yep. Ten. Verse ten. Things things turn around. The godly will rejoice when they see injustice avenged. Mm. They will wash their feet in the blood of the wicked. And that needs a little explanation. <laughs> this is a this is really a gross thing to us in. Uh, 2024, uh, blood is gross. I mean, it's just not, eh. um, there are people who can't handle seeing blood at all. But in those days, like today, if you take a bullet, you bleed out. But in those days, somebody's going to mash you with a sword and then mash you again until there's, in a battleground, they would be. Yeah, I, that's the way I see it, yeah. like a soldier. Yeah. Wash their feet. If you're a soldier, you're going through the yeah. truth. All the hand to hand combat, combat yeah. with slicing yeah. weapons. You know, limbs are being sliced off and so forth. You're sure, you're going to you're gonna have blood all over the ground, and you're going to get uh, you're going to get blood on your shoes for sure. Yeah. And also in the culture, and on your feet, sandals. You yeah. have a whole battlefield with bodies lying everywhere, mm. and then the people from the neighboring village come by and go, "Whoa." Hey, there's a sword. There's a helmet. There's a yeah. there's shoes, and they gather the spoils with their feet soaked. Sorry for being too graphic with that. In the blood of the uh, of the opposing soldiers, and um, yeah. and 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 really, they have happy feet because now they have a a sword that they didn't have before, or the the um, soldiers often carried a pouch with their money with work. their money and stuff and so yippee we're gonna yeah. go out in the blood field here and make uh you know a week's pay based on these uh whatever yeah if you're yeah. the one standing happy are you believe <laughs> that truly 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 everyone will say there's a reward for those who live for god surely there is a god who judges justly here on earth well, we know that God judges justly in heaven. It's in Revelation 19. And we know, and like Mike said, or Rich says earlier, it's only God who judges justly. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a judge, I'm not, I'm not besmirching you here, but if your judgment is godly, then it represents, then it represents uh justice and truth. But Righteous. God is the ultimate judge. And mm -hmm. so Going back to our original story, the same judge, same courthouse, one guy gets 25 years and one guy gets five years probation, enough to make the front cover of Time magazine, I can't remember, someplace in the 70s. And you think, how, how amazing it is in our justice system that long ago and even now that you would judge justly. And I've, mm. uh, um, I... I went to court with a young man, and the judge recognized me. We had a process that took, I don't know, months and months to get the court trial to go to whatever. And uh, so the young man was reprimanded to my custody. And the judge lo looks at me and said, Pastor, how's he doing? Which is an incredibly uh, proper, I mean, he's in my custody. I mean, he's in my um, guardianship or whatever. Um, 
Double A plus, Your Honor. That's good. Mm -hmm. And if I had said he's a mess, he's going to jail. I mean, it's just that that simple. And so if the judge was concerned with justice, and he, this particular judge on this particular day was, my feedback was important to him. And so we just think, dear God. I think there's many judges at the end of the day who say, what am I going to do? You know, Sorry. like, like you don't, you know, you try to be a good godly judge and the evidence this way and the evidence that way. That's right. You're like, what do I do, God? I have to make this decision. You know, I think it's hard for judges. That's right. A godly yeah. judge. And often judges are political appointees and sometimes they're elected appointees. Mm. Um and in fact, if you're on the Supreme Court, you don't need to be a lawyer. I've always <laughs> found that to be fascinating. They all are. Um, current ones are, but that's a so how do you how do you look out at a world of injustice and be content to say, God be the judge? Well, that's that's the first that's the first foundation. But the second foundation is perhaps you can make a difference in injustice, in mm. in trafficking or 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 whatever it is. Perhaps God has called you to make a difference in injustice. And you think, what an incredible honor that is. And how how serious is that challenge? Uh, he has. And he has. And yet. And yet the, the battle looks overwhelming. Uh, traffickers succeed, and occasionally the anti-traffickers pull somebody back into safety, and then the traffickers just go out and get more. I um, Sure. And Money we, we, that couldn't happen on Cape Cod. Well, yes, it can. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So we care about somebody pulled up to him and said, I, I'd like to make you a model. I'll give you 10 grand if you get in the car. Mm -hmm. And he said no, and he called the cops. But, you know, what would have happened if he got in the car? He would be a mess today and certainly certainly wouldn't have got the 10 grand. No. So that we would work for justice, that, 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 that there are things that are inherently wrong, that we can band together with people who have different politics than us or different theology from us and say, we can make a difference here. And so um, justice is such a hard picture for us because, because our vision is so tunnel vision. I want justice because, and we had a guy that I love to pieces, and he was suing people left and right, and he always lost. But he was certain of his own righteousness, certain of it. And <laughs> And he lost this case and it cost him 75 grand. And he, he lost this case. And it was just like, I'm determined that whatever I think is right, I want justice for me without taking a breath and hearing the heart of God and dear God. Oh, exhausting. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are indeed good and your mercy endureth forever. We thank you that you are our just judge and that you are a holy God, and that there is a judgment coming. We'd ask that we would walk uprightly. We thank you for the, for the blessings of walking with God Almighty, who is unchangeable and worthy of praise and honor. Bring blessing this day, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, for for who you are in your grace and mercies and your judgments, Lord. Forgive me for the things that I've done. Yeah. Lord, if you're a just judge, I should be doing life a hundred times over. But you, Lord God, by your mercy, by the blood of Jesus, I thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, help me to continue to put my self in other people's shoes today as I judge and as I go forward. I thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.
Yes, thank you again, Lord, for, the, for the, these scenarios that uh, are so so very relevant for this day and age. And thank you so much for our Lord Jesus Christ. If there's anybody who knows injustice, it is certainly He. Yes. We thank, thankfully, uh, He realizes the ramifications of that. But He was, uh, of course, to mar uh, marshal that that. Uh, situation into our salvation yes. uh, how, how blessed we are for for the the great god of the 180 who can take the ultra negative and turn it into the greatest of blessings amen prepare we prepare we're just thankful and we just ask lord that you will continue to lead us that we might uh, lead lives that glorify you in all of our judgments in jesus name Amen. Amen. Thanks all. Blessings to you. Blessings. Yes. Thanks for being with us.